I just picked up three Apple G4 laptops and they're all in pretty rough shape. So join me as we plug them directly into mains power to see if they work because this weird PowerPC Linux distro isn't going to install itself. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy reveling in somebody else's poor computer purchasing decisions, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. Picture this. It's the early 2000s and you want an Apple laptop. Well, the only thing you have to decide is whether you are a professional or a consumer. If you're a professional, then you need one of these. It's an Apple PowerBook G4 and it's the highest end laptop you can get. It has all of the best internal components, a beautiful display, and an aluminium enclosure that's much lighter than you would think. Now, if you're not a professional, well, you need one of these. It's the iBook G4. It comes in a polycarbonate plastic case, which is still rather nice, although they tend to yellow. It still has that powerful G4 processor, but you save a little bit on some of the internal components. These things absolutely infested college campuses in the early 2000s. They came in a 12 inch model, which is this, and also a 14.1 inch model, which feels gigantic. And I could not pass over this selection of three laptops when I saw them on Facebook Marketplace because they encapsulate pretty much the entire lineup of that era. So I have no idea if these work or if they will immediately burst into flames. Hey, don't look at that. Spoilers. Instead, listen to this quick word about today's wonderful sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is a one-stop solution for all of your PCB assembly and fabrication needs. Do you need to prototype something, build a run of a project? I bet PCBWay can handle the whole thing, the whole way through. PCB prototyping starts at just $5 for 10 pieces with as little as a 24-hour turnaround. And boy, do they offer a lot of different options. Flex PCB, Rigid Flex, HDI PCBs, every solder mask color under the sun. And they even offer PCB assembly, through hole surface mount, which starts at just $29 for one to 20 pieces. Many of the projects that supercharge are vintage machines with modern components just wouldn't be possible without the kinds of services that PCBWay offers. So if you have any PCB or prototyping needs, I hope you'll give PCBWay.com a try. Now oh, this poor PowerBook G4, who hurt you? Let's give it the old spritz treatment. How in the world does this happen? Well, in the positives, this hinge is super strong. Let's plug this thing into power and see if it explodes. All right, first good sign, the light has turned green. Oh, and now it's orange, indicating that it's actually charging. Dare we hit the power button? I say we do. Oh, it chimed. This thing's alive. The screen is very dim, though it's sort of coming back around. All right, this is the one gigahertz model with 256 megs of RAM running Mac OS 10.5.8. All right, this 12 inch iBook G4 is in much nicer condition. I'm not even gonna spritz this thing. All right, let's plug her into power. Green light. It chimed. Oh, this one's alive too. Well, the good news is the screen looks absolutely wonderful. I don't even see any dead pixels. The bad news is it has been attempting to boot into what appears to be macOS 10.4 Tiger for quite a while now, and I don't think it's gonna make it. All right, laptop number three, the 14 inch G4 with quite a bit of dirt and some sticker residue and marker. An interesting pattern of yellowing on the keyboard. <laughs> eh, do the impossible. Well, the impossible would be all three of these laptops just working. All right, powering on. No signs of life. So we're two for three. Maybe we'll crack this open and see if we can't take a look at what's going on inside. All right, I've got one of my favorite Linux distros here, Adelie for PowerPC Macintosh. So what do you think the chances are that the optical drive on this iBook G4 works? 
We'll hold down option to get to a boot menu. All right, in goes the boot CD. Oh, there it is, it works. Oh yeah, and just like that, look, we are in the XFCE Live environment. And it's actually pretty responsive, which is one of the amazing things about Adelie Linux, just how well it runs on ancient hardware. According to HiFetch, this is the final and fastest version of the iBook G4, the 1.3 GHz 7447A G4, paired with the ATI Mobility Radeon 9550, which this is the only model that had that GPU. And we've got a whopping one and a half gigs of RAM. Man, we really made out with this thing. And it died. I have no idea what went wrong. The screen suddenly dimmed. I couldn't turn the brightness back up, so I turned it off. And now it won't turn back on. But perhaps we'll have better luck with this lovely beat up PowerBook G4. Will we be two for two on working optical drives? We are. And thank goodness, because these 12 inch power books are a beast to take apart. Oh, this has started to make a horrible noise. Uh oh. <laughs> I think the screen may have given out. The computer is now running. Caps lock key turns on. But nothing on the screen. All right, let's see if we can coax any life out of this 14 inch iBook. We've got the good old iFixit guide up. Yeah, this thing is already missing all of the screws on the bottom. I think that may be a clue that someone else was in here. At a cursory glance, I don't see any obvious damage. And there are also no screws holding the top of the case on. Excellent. Oh, you know what I just noticed? This power button isn't even connected to anything. All right, let's try this again, this time with connected power button. I don't think she's happy. Wait, strike that. It's doing something. Oh yeah, look, it's boot Natalie Linux. Oh, I guess we better put the keyboard back on. And according to this little sticker in here, this thing is the 1.42 gigahertz iBook. That's the top of the line final iBook they ever made. Might as well stick this gig stick of RAM in here. Maybe we lucked out after all. All right, booting the trash book. Heck yeah, this thing booted right up. I hereby dub the Trashbook G4. Yeah, mouse works, keyboard works, two finger scroll works. These were the first computers in Apple's line to have two finger scroll in the trackpads. Let's see, LSB okay. Shows we do not have a hard drive. We need to find a hard drive for the Trashbook G4. Now these iBook G4s were still using IDE drives. Oh good, the chassis itself is crumbling. Now this seems to be missing some sort of hard drive caddy. I wonder if we can pilfer one from the newly dead 12 inch. Oh uh, yeah, I sure can take this one. Look at that. And out she comes. And there is the adapter we need, just a silly little piece of plastic. Can plug that right into our DOS Dude SSD. Voila! I think I need some sort of a spacer so this doesn't bounce around. Nothing a bit of cardboard can handle. I mean, this is the Trash Book G4. Might as well actually plug in the speakers this time. All right, let's power up the trash book G4. Hey, speakers work. Oh yeah, there's the SSD, it sees it. Now this is actually the Adelie Beta 5 boot CD and not the Adelie Beta 6 because, well, the power book doesn't want to give me that CD back and I'm not reburning it. So let us actually partition this disc manually. I need to do Mac F disk, dev SDA. I'm gonna literally be following my own Adelie Linux install guide 
that I posted a few years ago. I'll link this down in the description below because this one was also Adelie 5 and it worked great. This is of course called the Trash Book G4. No, it failed. All right, well, it says it couldn't download the SSL certificate, so I guess we have to use the Adelie 6 boot media. All right, a nice fresh install CD for our not very fresh at all trash book G4. All right, Adelie Linux successfully installed. And we have Grub installed on SDA2, so we'll have to reboot into open firmware to tell the Mac to boot from that. Command option OF at Chime. Eject CD. There we go. Well, I'm not sure what's going on here, but I only see the fonts directory on one partition. So I guess let's boot back up on the Adelie Live CD. All right, well, I couldn't quite get Adelie Linux fully installed on this thing. Actually, technically it is installed. I did a completely manual install, but something is going on with the bootloader. I'm seeing errors in Grub that I never saw before. And even trying to boot this out of Grub rescue mode, I still got that same weird error. So I don't know what's going on with that. If you have any ideas, please let me know down in the comments below. And despite this thing's uh, aesthetic deficiencies, just look at how much fun we've had with it so far. I mean, I bought this thing for like five bucks on Facebook Marketplace. Pretty sure if I didn't buy it, it was gonna wind up in a trash can. But e-waste is such a waste because even old broken machines still have something to offer, especially for a tinkerer. In any event, that'll do it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more stuff like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And I just want to give a very special thank you to all of my Patreon supporters and channel members. Thank you so much, each and every one of you, for supporting me and supporting this channel and all the weird stuff I do. I am so very grateful and I just could not do this without you.